Um, let's welcome our next guest, Steve Allison, who's a senior technology specialist at Adobe Systems. And um, Steve will introduce the latest project at, um, ordered by the BBC for the NBC. And the second screen application was prepared for the 2012 London Olympics and was built on Adobe technology and enhanced the coverage of the event. How? Let's find out. Please. Thank you. Hello. Good afternoon. So, I'm Steve Allison, as it says on the, uh, on the screen. I do two things. I help people get video onto any kind of screen. And today, that's actually you know, a lot of screens. You've got televisions, phones, tablets, set-top boxes. There's a bewildering array of different devices. So getting video there is one challenge. The second challenge may well touch uh, the heart of some of you. Making money out of that video. How do we monetize it? How do we get the value back from that video that we created? So this year, I worked with the BBC and I worked with NBC in the US with their Olympic projects on exactly those two issues. Getting that video on all those devices and actually being able to make money, to monetize that video on those devices. So what does it take, actually, to do something like the Olympics? The first thing it takes is engagement, getting the audience involved. One of the big problems today is that often content can be found in lots of different places. Why would someone go to your site, to your application, to see the same thing that they can watch somewhere else? So getting that branding, getting that interest from the users became really, really important for getting that loyalty there. In order to get the loyalty, quality becomes really important. So getting good quality video on all of those devices is a major challenge for people. Now, let's do a little test. Who thinks you can do HD video on the internet? Hands up. Anybody? Can you do HD on the internet? No. <laughs> so it's a really interesting thing. People come to me and they go, quality. I want quality on the internet, and that means HD. And I say to them, do you come from a web background, or do you come from a broadcast background? Because if you come from broadcast, you absolutely can't do HD on the web. If you come from the web, yeah. So when we talk about HD, when we talk about quality, we talk about you know, beautiful picture on all those different devices, all of those different screens. Okay? So quality is both subjective, because sometimes quality can be balanced against the speed of getting the video to that device. Generally, the smaller the screen, the less important quality is. The bigger the screen, the more important. Okay? And I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that as we, as we go through. So then we've got the devices. If I've got my video, I only want to have one video. And I don't want to use it on all of those other things that have a screen that people are going to use. And with that, then, comes the scale. How many people watch the Olympics? Three of you, four of you. I'm sure more of you did. Everybody loves the Olympics. It is probably the biggest single video event ever. Getting all of that video on all of those devices, again, can be a real challenge. So solving that problem was part of what we did. But also, did you know that you actually have to buy the video content. So the Olympic Broadcasting Service sells the video from the Olympic Park. So the BBC, NBC, all those other people had to pay in order to get that video stream. So the business model becomes really important to some people. Now, if you're the BBC, it's less of a problem because we all pay the BBC, or, or Brits pay the BBC. NBC have a subscription service. So they had to get that money back. They had a business model that had to be enacted through all those different devices. And lastly, if you've got a business model, that usually means you have to protect the video, DRM. And again, we'll talk about that later on. But the first problem we had, the first thing we talked about at the BBC was, what's the audience going to be? What's the engagement going to be? Is it sit back, relax? big picture, high quality, 
Or is it lean forward, press buttons, get involved, do something? And actually, that, that was a big discussion because it completely alters the way that you deliver video. Television is very much sit back. You sit back, you watch it, everything's great. But by their nature, iPads, tablets, phones, they're stuff you press, they're stuff you rub your finger over, they're stuff you do things with. So the nature of that interaction was the first thing we had to decide. Is it sit back or is it lean forward? But of course, with the Olympics, with, in fact, with any sport, it's not sit back, it's not lean forward, it's jump up and down, come on England, it's excitement. So that model had to be translated both ways. If you wanted to sit back, fantastic. If you wanted to lean forward and get more information, we had to be able to do that as well. So balancing those two things became tremendously important. And not only because you've got multiple screens. So television consumption, we know, is not going away. Slowly, television consumption increases every year. So the second screens are either catch up or complementary to the big television screen. Again, that's important. So you're not taking away the audience from the television. You're increasing the amount of views for that content. So that second screen can be re-watching, catching up, rewinding, getting more information, a second viewing screen. Or it can be a secondary application and for the BBC, that's the primary role that they used with their second screens. Okay, when you had the iPlayer, your, uh, sorry, uh, when you had your devices, your smartphone, your tablet, or whatever, it wasn't necessarily re-watching something, it was getting more information, getting the statistics, re rewinding and re-watching. So we had to have a model that fitted both the big screen and that small screen, which complicates things. Different devices have different technologies. We have a whole range of delivery capabilities. iOS uses something called HLS. Flash uses something called HDS. Microsoft, they do something completely different, smooth streaming. So actually achieving the same video on all of those different devices can be quite complex. And that's just the delivery. Once you start getting into things like the metadata, the DRM, protecting that video, how do I make it look right on that size of screen for that kind of device? It can be, actually, quite a complex thing. I say can be because, actually, that's no longer the case. There are a lot of technologies now which make it a lot easier to deliver the content, same content, on all those different devices. Of course, you know, two or three years ago, it was dead easy. You wanted to have great video quality, every device, use Flash. It's still actually a very good choice. The BBC used it, NBC used it, they used Spit Silverlight as well, but it's still a great choice for delivery. And there's a reason for that. Delivering good quality video actually can be technically quite hard. Who's heard of HTML5? Who's heard of HTML5 video tag? <laughs> Who thinks HTML5 video tag is any good for video? Yeah, see me afterwards. No, <laughs> it can't do it. HTML5 video tag um, allows you to play back a video. Proper video delivery is a lot more involved. You've got bit rates, bit rate switching, you've got DRM, you've got bandwidth detection, you've got buffering control. There's a whole load of stuff which actually can be quite technical. Flash does that really well. Hell, Silverlight does that really well. Having a dedicated player that looks after that becomes really important. So we've got Flash, we've got our Air technology for building applications, but we've also got what we call the Adobe Video Engine, technology that allows you to run video, Flash video if you like, on other devices natively. So no Flash player, no Air player, just the native code, but exactly the same capability. And that's important because we're seeing now a lot of people really interested in using HTML5 as an interface, as a UI, as a method of delivering the video experience, but not actually the video itself. So balancing HTML5 with a proper video delivery solution actually provides a really good way of reusing that interface, reusing that branding across lots of different devices. So Flash is good, 
HTML5 will be there in a few years, but ain't quite ready just yet. So the BBC dubbed this the digital games. And for the first time ever, they put every single event from start to finish available over the internet. So at the end of the two weeks, you could go back and watch the beginning of, you know, pick your sport, anything that you want. That had never been done before. That was a tremendous amount of video content. 2.7 petabytes of data they delivered on their peak days. It's just masses of information. But the experience was really important. That meant for the first time, you could literally watch everything. It wasn't the edited highlights. It wasn't what someone else thought you ought to be watching that was interesting. It was what you wanted to watch, where you wanted to watch it, on the device you wanted to watch it on. So with those 24 live streams, each of those had seven different bit rates. Everyone heard of bitrate switching? Anyone not heard of it? Okay, a few people shaking their heads. So bitrate switching basically is a way of allowing you to jump between different streams of the same video. So if you've got a nice big fast internet connection, you can have a lovely big picture in high quality. If you've got a low connection to the internet, you have a small picture so it can be delivered fast and you still get to watch the video. So they had seven different qualities of video for every single stream. And that meant a number of things. It meant that you always got the very best experience, the very best picture that you could on that, devo on that device at that point in time. So the whole thing was geared towards that quality that is so important. But it also meant that you had lots of different stream bit rates, stream rates, picture qualities, and different picture sizes. So here's one of the interesting things. If you're going to deliver video to a television and video to a device, what's the big difference between those two videos? Anyone? Bit rate, yeah, that's one of them. Resolution, size. That's a crucial thing. Size of picture, the size of the screen makes a difference. Size of the screen basically is the number of dots you need to make the picture up. So if I've got few dots all the way up to massive number of dots, I also then automatically have a correct resolution, a correct size for all the different streams, all the different devices that I want to target. So this was brilliant because this meant that they could have 24 streams at seven different bit rates and it would cover every single screen size. So they didn't have to have a special iPad version, a special television version, a special whatever. It was all covered in those different streams. So that made a big difference to them. Reusing that content became really, really important for what they wanted to do. They also did a lot to that. They added a lot of data into the stream. They added chapter marks so you could jump backwards and forwards between different events. And we'll have a look at a bit more of that uh, in a moment. So they used a delivery technology, um, actually from us, that delivered that same video to all of those different devices. And in fact, to be really honest, there's only two kinds of video um, protocols that are really important, HLS and HDS. So HLS is the one that uh, Apple uses. So all iPad devices, iPhones, iWhatevers, they use HLS, and they use that delivery method. It's an HTTP delivery method. Anyone want to go further into uh, technology? We can do that later. The other one is HDS. That's, that's the flash stuff. So iOS and, in fact, Android devices, a lot of them are now using HLS. Anything flash, you've got HDS. Between those two, pretty much you've covered every single kind of device. Okay? So the only one sort of missing from that is the Xbox, which still uses Smooth. You may use HLS later on, but it's Smooth at the moment. So most of those devices get covered by that delivery mechanism. But importantly now, we can use a single stream, those video files coming out of the cameras at the Olympic Park, and reformat them for any other kind of device. One file going in, multiple files coming out. So that gives you that quality, it gives you the range of different devices. But it also raises an interesting point between the soul of a device and the consumption. So devices have different ways actually of interacting, and the player on those devices becomes really, really important. So if you have a player 
Does it reflect your branding or does it reflect the branding of the device? That's a big question that people have asked themselves at the moment. With iOS, for example, the player basically is QuickTime, so you don't get to do much around the branding. It's the way it comes out of the device. But on other devices, on Android devices, you can actually brand that video playback environment. So that balancing act between doing something which reflects what the device is like or having a consistent branding across all of those devices is a real decision that needs to be made. The BBC went for having their branding across the entire board. We'll have a look at that in a moment. So being able to deliver video to all of those devices is great. Sometimes we have to protect that content. DRM. Anyone ever deal with DRM? A few of you? Yeah, it's, it's a nightmare. It's a horrible thing to have to worry about, but you have to worry about it. Protecting valuable content is really important. So again, having a DRM system that can run across all of those devices made the delivery a lot simpler. So for the BBC, for NBC, for a load of video producers around the world, Access provides a single DRM strategy across all of those different devices. One method of encryption, any device. And again, making that workflow a lot easier. All right, so what did the BBC actually do? There are two ways of actually using that content. You went to the web page or you went to the app. Notice any similarities between the two? It's exactly the same content. So they repurposed everything that they did on the web pages to work inside of their applications. As I said, their branding was what they wanted across all those devices. So not just reusing the same video, reusing the same environment, the same richness of content, the same stories on all of those different devices. Now, IP delivery, delivery over internet protocols, has a number of really good advantages over traditional television. And probably the most important of those in terms of the Olympics was this ability to overlay content. So we heard um, earlier in the, uh, the Black Diamond presentation this morning about videos overlay in Flash. And that's exactly what we did here. So this was the lean forward engagement that was so important right at the beginning. That ability to say, actually, I want to know what's going on. I want to know who's diving. I want to know what their score was last time. I want to jump back and see their last dive. That kind of interactivity is really where IP delivery, internet delivery, excels. The big screen, televisions, it's social, it's great quality, it's fantastic, but it's sit back. Drive in, jump in, jump around, see the data. That was something that you could bring on all those other devices. In fact, I watched the Olympics almost exclusively on a Google TV. So coming into my, my big television, but I was using the actual internet stream because it gave me all that other information. So even when you go full screen, still being able, that's uh, Tom Daly, by the way, bronze medal winner, good lad. Um, even then, being able to dive into that content, to become engaged with it, to see the bits that you wanted to see, was a tremendously different experience to what normally happens with the Olympics. In fact, what normally happens with television. You know, there was no editor's view of what you should be seeing. It was what you wanted, when you wanted, on the device that you wanted. So that environment became really important to how the BBC built up that engagement. We're reusing the same content on all of those different screens. I'm reusing my data on all of those different screens. So again, the workflow, the, the design, the build that had to go on behind it was the same for all those other devices. So there's some stats here. Did it actually work? Were people actually using the internet delivery? Oh yeah, they had massive numbers. Quite interestingly, you know, 55 million global browsers, so 55 million people, 37% of them in the UK. England's only got a population of 63 million. So half of them were watching on those IP devices. Why? Because you could do more. You could dive into it, you could rewind, you could do all those great things that we talked about. But also, it's the first time where we have actual numbers, actual proof that people do want to watch on mobile devices. That a mobile device can be someone's first choice of watching or re-watching or whatever, rather than the big screen. So 9.2 million 
mobile, browse, uh, mobile browsers. 34% I mean, of the daily consumption just on mobile. That's great. Remember, that doesn't take away from what happened on the television. That's in addition. Those are new eyeballs for that content. Reaching people where they want, how they want, really does make up the numbers. <laughs> so the BBC was relatively simple. They just wanted to have great quality video, all of it, the entire games, on anything that had a screen. NBC wanted to do a very similar thing. They wanted to do the multiple screen stuff, the data rich stuff, but they also had a completely different business model. Okay, this is subscription, this is advertiser revenue. So they not only had to have the video, but they had to have the adverts around that to make the whole thing pay back the money that they'd spent to actually get the feeds in the first place. But video on the internet and advertising on the internet today is a pretty ugly experience. Okay? It's not really done well. And the reason is because they're completely separate workflows. We can deliver video, fantastic. But the moment you want to put an advert in, usually you play your video, you stop it, you overlay a new video window, you play your advert, you take it away, you unpause it, and you go. Oh, overly complex, way too difficult. It ends up in buffering. Okay, because you're stopping and starting streams, you're calling things in from different directions. It's a messy way of doing it. It's also usually not very intelligent. People typically reuse the same adverts for the TV onto an IP device. That's a real waste of time. Relevance is really important. You know? What advert is relevant to that person on that device? And that's exactly the solution that we provided to NBC. So we now brought together the video and the adverts into a single stream. Okay, so for the technology guys among you, um, that means that you've got one stream coming into the player. One stream. So when you want to do your bitrate switching to get the quality, perfect. It works flawlessly because there's only one stream coming in. And I can jump between those different streams to get better quality or to go down if I'm getting congestion on my internet. But also, I'm marrying this, I'm putting this together with some intelligence around those adverts. Okay? I'm making a better choice. If I make a better choice of advert, people don't just turn away from it or turn off the device or change channel or whatever. So enabling them to make intelligent decisions about the advert enables them to have a better chance at monetizing that video. And IP is brilliant for that. On IP, you can do stuff. We're all used to you know, pre-roll ads, mid-roll ads, post-roll ads. Okay? We, we see all that on television. Fantastic. That's no problem. On video, over IP channels, we can also start to add overlays. Now, if we want to be a bit more clever, we might have an overlay badge and pull that through. So it makes it a bit less obvious that there's advertising going on. But linking that in with the content makes it relevant. If it's relevant, then people click on it, people watch it, you've got a better chance of them doing something. So we enable them to start to coordinate what happens in that video window with what happens on the rest of the page. So think about this. You're in the website. You're watching a video of your favorite sport. They know from the metadata inside of that video what it is that you're watching, which part of the competition is in, and everything else. So instantly, I can start to bring up all the related content other places where that athlete has, has performed, um, team scores, all of that kind of stuff related to the content. Advertising related to the content, making the whole thing much more intelligent as we go through it. So if we've got more opportunities using internet connected video than we have on normal video on TVs, but we still want to have that video-like experience that we have on TV. Okay, on TV, there's no pausing, there's no buffering, nothing. It just goes program, advert, and so on. So we want that same experience, but we can now start to make it a lot more intelligent on all of those different platforms. <laughs> okay, that's a complicated slide. Don't, re don't read it. <laughs> What's going on? So we know stuff about people when they're on an internet-connected device. And this is where Adobe's digital marketing technology really comes into its own. So we know your IP address, we know what page you're looking at, what page you've just been on, you know, where you've come from, which site you've come from. There's loads of information that we've got there. 
So why don't we use that information? If it's a subscription site like, like NBC, they've got profile information. Steve Allison, this is where he lives. This is his information. Use that. So we take that information. We use that information to make much better decisions about the advert that gets shown. So even though we're putting those adverts into the stream, the clever stuff going on with the analytics is saying this is going to be more relevant to that particular person. Okay, you've got two choices if you want to make money out of video. You get people to pay for it up front, or you use advertising. Okay, those are basically the two models. Getting people to pay for it, fantastic. If you can do that, awesome. But advertising, you know, potentially, we can still make money if those adverts are intelligently placed. So at NBC, we use that information. Anyone heard of Site Catalyst? Okay, a couple of you. So Site Catalyst is technology which allows you to understand what the user is doing in that session. So where they've come from, what they're clicking on, all that kind of information. We also have technology called Audience Manager. Behavioral segmentation. If you do this, and you watch that, and something else, then this is the most relevant content for you. So we're using that technology to make a better decision about what's going to work for that particular user on that device. On that device becomes important because people's willingness to watch an advert is very different on different devices. Okay? You're prepared to watch an advert on TV because we're, we're kind of used to that. On a desktop, yeah, we're probably used to that. On a phone, no, it just, just annoys me. So I want to watch less adverts there. So how do we balance the best number of adverts on each of those devices and make those adverts that we do show much more relevant? Okay? That's the technology that we can start to bring to bear using our digital marketing technology, using things like Test and Target, Audience Manager, Site Catalyst. So NBC used that information to make better decisions about how many adverts and which adverts to show a particular person at a particular point in time. You may have seen um, our marketing around this. We, we call it prime time. Prime time. Some in lights. Prime time. What it essentially does is bring together the intelligent workflow for delivery stuff. So that same video file, those same bit rates on all devices. Advertising. Getting an advert into that stream. And the marketing, the digital marketing stuff, the analytics about, is this working? And we put all that together in the player. So the player really is a really core part of this. If you get the player right, the rest of it follows through. If you get the player right, you can get the quality right. If you get the player right, you can get advertising right. If you get the player right, you can understand the analytics. Bringing all those together is what we do and what we did for the Olympics. So delivering it, fantastic. I put in adverts that are really relevant to that person on that device. How do I know it's working? The second part, if you like, of the business model is not just making it relevant ad, but actually seeing if it worked. So again, we provided NBC with a set of dashboards which gave them information about what's going on. What video streams are we watching? How many people are watching it? What are my adverts doing? Am I making money? Am I not making money? Do I need to change something? So providing that intelligence allows you to make better business decisions allows you to monetize that video much more effectively. And of course, this works across all of those different devices. So whether you are on a, a smartphone or a set-top box or a television or whatever, doesn't make a real difference. The technology takes away that problem of getting the right kind of video onto the right screen and allows you to focus on actually making the best use of the eyeballs that are watching that particular content. So from the Olympics, we found that in general, the more content we can put out, the better. The more content was available, the more people used that content. In the BBC's case, you know, they had every single event from start to finish. They were all used. Even events that no one thought, you know, curling. You know, who watches curling? I hope no one does. Anyway, people watched it. They, they watched it because it was there. They could get into it. They saw the whole thing, not just little parts of it. Give them the content, people will watch the content. The combination of showing the same video clips on the television 
and on those devices, but allowing you to interact differently on the devices really made that level of engagement much stronger than it would normally be. So the stuff they did on devices helped drive people back to the television so that you didn't cannibalize, you, know, you, you didn't reduce any of that consumption there. And of course, actually getting that same video on those different devices actually isn't that hard. Okay, technology today, our technology, um, Microsoft technology, heck, even iOS technology and HLS, we can do that. We can deliver those videos simultaneously to multiple devices. That's no longer a, a problem. It's merely a workflow that we have to put into place. And a lot of that is due to the fact that people are now switching over to HTTP delivery. Anyone know what HTTP delivery is? Anybody not know? Let's make a... Okay. Basically, you've got two ways of delivering video, a true stream or HTTP. A true stream has a one-to-one -one connection. If you've got a million people watching, you've got a million connections to your server. That's great, but you, know, you have to have lots of servers in order to make that work. HTTP chops up the video into small bits and sticks it on the internet, web cache, exactly the same as a web page or a JPEG or anything else. That made a heck of a difference. When the BBC put all of that content out, it only published it once. Okay? It pushed it out live. It was then there, in the caches, waiting for people to watch it. So when you rewound something, when you went back to the beginning of a, an event, you didn't have to republish anything. There was only one push of the content. After that, you just used the cache stuff. So HTTP really makes a huge difference here. If you're delivering, um, what, what did I say, 2.8 petabytes of data, they had seven servers. And three of those were failover servers in case the other four fell over. Now, seven servers, 2.8 petabytes, that's good stuff. And HTTP allows that to happen. So then you've got your ability to do um, the advertising. If you can get them to pay, great. If you can't, then advertising is the way that you can make money. But you have to make it much more like the TV experience. No buffering, no separate streams, no breaking the connection and blank screens and all that kind of stuff. It has to be smooth. It also has to be relevant to the person. You need to identify them, their device, what they are, what they're watching, and make it relevant to that particular part. And then, of course, you need to be true to the actual device itself. There's no point having interactive stuff on big screens, because usually big screens are social viewing. You're not the only one in charge of that. In my family, we have enough fights over who owns the remote control. So actually guiding through different activities, that ain't going to work on a big screen. But combine the big screen with your tablet, with your phone, suddenly you can do a lot more to keep people engaged, to keep them focused, to monetize that content. So that's what we did for the BBC. It's what we did for NBC. As a result of that kind of an approach, we had you know, new records set across the world for the amount of people watching on all of those different channels. And not just watching, but NBC were making money out of those videos a lot easier than they were previously. If you have any questions, um, I think I have uh, five minutes before we, we go. No? In that case, thank you very much for listening.